In this video, we're going to talk about getting input from a file. So far, all the input that we have got has come from the user typing it on the keyboard. But there are many times when it is more beneficial to be able to store the, info, the data in a file and then be able to use it later in a program. So to do that, first we need to have a file with data in it. So here's how you can create one. Go File, New, and File. There's lots of choices. There are going to be different languages, but make sure you're in the General tab and choose Text File. This gives us a file and it will automatically put it in the project folder. We want to give it a good name, so we're going to do Save, File As, and I'm going to be storing scores in here, test scores, so I'm going to call it scores.txt. And I want to double check. I'm going to come down here and click All Files and make sure it's in exactly the same folder as my .cpp file. So this is my .cpp file where I'm writing my program. My input file needs to be in exactly that same location, so I'm going to save it right there. And now I can put some data in there. I'm going to put the scores 97, 83, 69, 78, and 91. So there I have five scores and I'm going to save it. And then I can go back to my function. Now to read from a file I need to include a header file, um, fstring. So I'm going to include that header file and now I have to create a file stream object. So for input, the file stream that I'm going to use is ifstream. That's the type. This is a variable, and that's the type. And now I get to pick the name for my variable. Well, I'm going to pick the name fn. Uh, you can pick whatever name you want, so it can be different each time you use it. fn makes it very similar to cn. So I now, now what I need to do is open that file and connect it to the file that I just made. So the way to do that is with the name of my variable, fn, dot, open. And now here inside the parentheses, I'm going to put the name of the file and I include the whole thing, including the extension. And I write the file now, right there. And now I'm connected to that file and it's open and ready for me to use it. I'm going to be reading scores, so I'll need to have a variable to read into. So there's score. So now what I can do is I'm going to get this value from the file. With the user I have to ask them for it, but with the file you don't need to ask them, you just need to know what's there. So I know that the first thing there is a number that is the score I want. So I'm just going to directly read it and store it in my variable score. And then I can print it out and say the score is and print out the score that I just read and let's run that program and see what happens. And there we have the score is 97 which is exactly what the first value in the file was. So now if I wanted to do this five times I could put it in a for loop that happened five times, right? Int i equals zero i semicolon i less than five i plus plus and then it would happen five times and I can run it and it reads all those scores 97, 83, 69, 78, 91. Let's go make sure they match and it was able to read all of those scores and I knew there was exactly five in there so I could read all five of them. Now sometimes we have a very long file, so here's a file that has lots of scores in and I don't know how many there are. So in this case I want to use a while loop. All right? And I want to choose, just like with the while loop, remember we need to remember all of our important steps. So I need to write a condition that is true when I want to continue and false when I want to stop. Well a good condition for this is actually this read statement right here. So I'm going to take this read statement, I'm going to take it out because I don't want to do it twice, and I'm going to move it up right there. All right, and now, notice what happens, now I'm going to read it. Well, this read statement is true as long as it gets a value. When the values are all gone and it can't read a value, it's false, which is exactly what I want to stop. I want it to be true as long as it can read a value, and I want it to be false when it stops.
One of the other important things with the while loop is getting the loop started or priming the loop. Well, this read primes the loop because it actually, the first time you get to this while loop, it actually performs the read. And so it becomes the prime to itself. Then it's the condition. It can be either true or false. And the other thing that we really need, well, then we need to do the work. This happens to be the work is all we're doing is printing out the score. And the last thing we need is a way to stop the loop. And this, so when we get done with this loop, we go up, what do we do? Reread the next score. And then we do the loop again, and then we read the next score. Well, this read ultimately will end the loop because it will finally read when there's nothing left and it will turn false. So this becomes the read to how to stop the loop. So it is all three of these things. It is the condition that is true when we want to start, keep going and false when we want to stop. It's priming the loop because it's ready to start right when it gets there the very first time. It reads it and has a valid value. And it is the way to stop it because it reads each time through and it will ultimately stop. So let's go ahead and read that. Now I want to do this with a, well, let's go ahead and do it with the original one first. Uh, so we can do it even if we, so it did our regular five. So we knew that would work. Now let's go ahead and copy all of this and say, okay, now we have a whole bunch that we don't know how many there are in that file. So let's go ahead and run the program now. And there we go. We have all of them. Let's make sure that we have all of them. So what we want to do is go make sure we got the very first ones. And there we go. The very first ones are, to get clear to the top, 82, 77, 45, 91, 85, and there they are. Let's go all the way to the bottom and check we got the last ones. So we'll go over here and go all the way to the bottom of the file and make sure we got all the last ones. 70, 55, 88, 79. So we were able to get them all. And now we can read this data from the file. We can do other work besides just write. We can do things like count. So if we want a counter, we set that equal to zero so we can count right. And we want a total so we could total them up. We set that equal to zero. And now instead of printing them back out, we can do things like each time we read a score, we count it. So our work becomes to count it. We can add, add it to the accumulator by totaling, adding the score to the total. And that gives us the opportunity then when we're out to know some information about that. Now we can print out what the, um, there were, and we can say how many there were count scores in the file. And we can do things like compute average, right? And the average equals total divided by count. Now this, those are both integers, so that's integer division. So I need the static cast one of them to be a double or a float so we don't get integer division. And then I can report the average is. And now I can run it and produce this, read the data from the file. It can tell me that there were 176 scores. The average was 77.5852. Lots of things you can do, and you can get very large data sets in a file. And to do big things, notice that I did not have to change anything in the loop when I went from reading only five to reading 176. So the loop is exactly the same no matter how big the file is.